20 years is a long time. When the first segment of the Los Angeles Metro Red Line began operating in 1993, the added pedestrian traffic from the five stations started an economic revival in parts of downtown. Within 90 days, seven new retail businesses opened around the 7th and Flower Metro station. One new business across the street from the station is Primo's. Its owner, Joel Kimmel, likes what he sees through his store's windows. Interesting thing about this location, you can see them coming off the Metro, and our staff here pretty much knows the customer and knows their drink, so by the time they walk in, they have their drink ready and say, good morning, how are you? This location, the Hilton one, we looked, the, one of the determining factors was being close to the Metro here, knowing that the only thing it's going to do is gr grow with the number of people coming off the Metro. And if you're within walking distance or in front of people, they're going to come in. Along with the challenges of doing business in this downtown location, Primo's shares a certain financial responsibility with its neighbors since the opening of the subway. They each participate in a funding program for the Metro Red Line. That is, Primo's and the other properties contribute to the Benefit Assessment District program for Segment 1 of the Metro Red Line. An assessment is a fee levied on benefiting properties to pay for the costs of capital improvements, such as metro rail stations. Direct benefits accrue to private property owners located around metro rail stations. The Central City Association, represented by its president, Don McIntyre, supports benefit assessment for downtown LA. If you have a property near where there are a large number of people congregating, uh, that's a real marketing opportunity. The benefit assessment program is run by the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority. This agency is composed of the former LACTC and RTD. They merged in 1993 and have continued on with a benefit assessment program, which was originally established in 1985. The MTA is the builder and operator of all new rail lines, including the Metro Red Line. They built the first segment, which is now running between Union Station and MacArthur Park. Approximately 1,500 properties currently are assessed in the Segment 1 Assessment District. Meanwhile, construction continues along the route of Segment 2 and 3 to Wilshire and Normandy and Hollywood and Vine, which will open during 1996. And the final leg of the red line, Segment 3, will take the line to the San Fernando Valley by the year 2001 and into East and West Los Angeles in coming years. The funding for the initial 18-mile Metro Red Line comes from a combination of sources. 97% is from the federal government, the state of California, Los Angeles County Transportation Sales Tax, and City of Los Angeles Revenues. The remaining 3% is being raised by the Benefit Assessment Program. The benefit assessment dollars not only fill the 3% gap, but these private dollars speak loudly to state and federal legislators who are influenced by the fact that business owners in Los Angeles are putting their own money into the construction of the red line. Benefit assessment dollars give the MTA a distinct advantage over other regions in the nation when competing for federal and state dollars. The MTA has the ability to establish benefit assessment districts under the California State Public Utilities Code, Section 33000. The law requires that local government, the Los Angeles City Council, approves the district's boundaries and method of assessment. Benefit assessment district lines are drawn at one-half mile distance beyond a rail station in the downtown districts and one-half mile walking distance in other districts. The properties are assessed, on the average, about 15 cents per square foot per year, based on either the building or parcel size, whichever is greater. The MTA may increase or decrease this annual rate up to 32 cents per square foot in any given year to generate revenues necessary to cover bonds. The assessed properties are offices, retail stores, parking lots, and hotels or motels, excluding long-term residency units. Exempt from any benefit assessment are residential properties, religious institutions such as churches and temples, and properties owned and used by nonprofit organizations or public agencies. The MTA notifies owners by letter that their properties are included in a benefit assessment district. MTA staff members are available to meet with property owners to review their benefit assessments. During these discussions, payment options and schedules can be reviewed. 
The MTA also has a process for owners to appeal any aspect of the assessment. The collection of assessment fees begins when the rail line opens to the public in that particular assessment district. There is a time schedule available from the MTA that indicates when the rail lines will start in the different districts. If the opening date of the rail line is delayed, so is the collection. The assessment will be levied for 29 years. There are four payment options for paying benefit assessment fees. They are, one, an owner can pay annually for 29 years, two, make five annual payments, three, pay a one-time lump sum payment in advance and receive a discount, or four, make a one-time lump payment at the same time as the opening of the rail line. There are different advantages associated with each payment option that property owners should consider in determining which method is best suited for their needs. Whether paying annually or in advance, owners may want to discuss their options with the MTA staff. The benefits of being within walking distance of a metro rail station are different for each business. One way to get an idea of the impact is to study what is happening in downtown Los Angeles. Around the MacArthur Park Station, the crime rate has dropped 20% because of the increased security provided by MTA police. At Alvera Street, merchants have noted a new flow of visitors coming from the direction of Union Station. We've had an opportunity to, to uh, talk to some people walking up from Union Station, telling us that uh, now that the subway is open, they have an opportunity to come down here, where in the past they weren't, because it was a big task to get in the car, get down here, fight the traffic, the lights, park the car, get into the restaurant, sit down, get served, and get back within a reasonable period of time. Now all they have to do is go down to the substation, put a quarter in the machine, travel down here in less than 10 minutes. For major complexes such as the Broadway Plaza, the subway means new business. We have two key exit points for the Metro Rail, which are important to not only patron traffic here at the plaza, you know, which increases the foot traffic and helps the retailers become very viable um, retailers here at the center, but for the office tower, they know that they have easy access for their clients coming in, guests coming in, and it just makes the whole project itself very vibrant and, of course, bottom line, very successful. The Metro Rail subway is one of the agents of change occurring in Los Angeles. The funds that today's local business owners put into building the Metro Red Line will make a difference in the future of Los Angeles. The rail system's ultimate impact will be long-lasting and provide modern public transportation for the Los Angeles region, assisting residents, businesses, and visitors for the decades ahead. The investment made today is the foundation of the dividends of tomorrow.